got a couple of attorneys here today to talk to us about law practice in smaller towns, smaller communities, how that might differ from a larger city practice. Um, as we were chatting before the program, I asked them how business was. And if you've been paying attention to reports on the legal economy, you know that business in a lot of places is pretty darn slow. And both of these gentlemen responded that they were swamped. So that in and of itself is a, a good reason to listen to what they have to say today about practicing in small towns and, and the opportunities there. Um, at the end of the program, I'd also like to talk about the specifics of the Bremeyer Summer Clerk Scholarship Fund, which, um, as you read in our email, is for 1Ls and 2Ls who work in Kansas counties other than Johnson, Wyandotte, Sedgwick, Shawnee, and Douglas over the summer, so the other 100 counties in Kansas. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that, um, how you can apply the monies that are available, and uh, things of that nature. But we've got Brett Reber from uh, McPherson and Jeff Mason from Goodland to talk to you guys about what they do. Thanks. We flipped a coin and I lost, so I guess I get to start. And eventually I'll trip over this little ledge here, so just laugh when that happens. Uh, my name's Jeff Mason. I'm an attorney in Goodland with a two-man firm called Venerian Mason, LLC. Uh, Venerian Mason has been in existence since 1986. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of history about that prior to uh, 1986 here in a minute. I grew up in Ulysses, Kansas. Those of you who are familiar with Kansas would know that Ulysses is in, is in the far southwest corner of Kansas, a town that's probably around 6,000 at this point. Uh, when I grew up there, it was 5,000 or 4A high school, for those of you who pay any attention to the classifications to the high schools. I uh, graduated from high school there, went to the University of Kansas in 1976, uh, graduated in 1980. I did a study abroad for a year. Uh, with the university and also with John Cabot International College in Rome, Italy. Was over there for 11 months and then uh, went to KU Law School. I was married when I started law school but had no kids yet. Uh, come on in, pick a chair. Uh, and decided early on that I wanted to go back to Western Kansas to practice law. Uh, if I wasn't in Western Kansas, I'd probably be in Lawrence because it's my second most favorite place uh, next to Western Kansas. But I didn't want to go back to Ulysses. And that was one of the dynamics that I, I just decided that I had so much family there that I didn't want to deal with going back home. So uh, it was one of those I want to be close enough but just far enough away. And the opportunity arose in Goodland. Uh, to be an associate with a three-man firm at that time, I became the fourth person as the associate, and they promptly broke up, almost literally before I got there. I was interviewed in February, accepted the job in March, and when I came out to look for houses in June, they said, uh, by the way, uh, 1st of November, we're not going to be a firm anymore. You can practice with us and then decide whether you want to go out on your own or whether you want to go with one side or the other. And I went with... Uh, two of the guys that split off, and that firm was Faust and Venaria and existed until 1986 when Mr. Faust decided to go out on his own, and at that point I became a partner after being a lawyer for three years. So that was the track uh, of how quickly I became a partner in a law firm in Goodland, Kansas. Uh, when I moved to Goodland, there were 17 attorneys in Goodland. There are now seven. One of those is the county attorney. One of those is the child support enforcement attorney. One is the trust officer at the local bank. And one is a guy out of Denver that grew up in Goodland and comes down two days a week and does some business and tax practice. That leaves three private practice attorneys in Goodland, and I'm the youngest at 51 years old. The other two guys are 65 in October, and the other one just turned 66 last May. And so they're thinking about retiring, which then leaves me as the only lawyer in Goodland in private practice. There are eight in Colby, which is 35 miles away. There are three in Sharon Springs. There are three in St. Francis, one of whom's 
over 60. There are two in Atwood, one of whom's over 60. There are two in Oakley, and as I said to somebody recently, they both should retire. Uh, there's three in Hoxie. There's one in Leota. There's one in Tribune. That's a 60 to 75 mile radius around Goodland. And as I told Todd, we're swamped. We have enough work to do uh, and more. And there are plenty of opportunities to practice law in western Kansas, in small towns all over Kansas. Because if you look at the blue book and look at the number of attorneys that are in each county, you'll see that the same situation exists in most county seats in Kansas outside of eight or ten counties. Chautauqua County, their county attorney left, and they advertised for I don't know how long in the Bar Journal trying to get somebody to come to town. They had no attorneys in the entire county. So it's not just northwest Kansas. It's all over Kansas. And uh, there's plenty of work to do. And I, I would hesitate to say we're recession-proof, but I've been watching the news reports. I've been seeing all the layoffs in the big cities. And I'll tell you what, we could use five or six of you right now in our area. And you'd be making money now. What type of practice do we have? I'm a general practitioner, jack-of-all-trades, master of absolutely none. This morning on the way down here, I dictated a contract for the city of Goodland and Sherman County about animal control. I made a couple of phone calls on a real estate deal that's closing tomorrow. I sent a letter to a client who's in jail on three <coughs> off-grid felonies for which he could be sentenced to a minimum of 75 years to life. I sent a letter to another client who's charged with misdemeanor battery. I sent a client to a, I sent a letter to a client who's getting a divorce. We're wrapping it up. Uh, Adam Deese here came out and on the Braymeyer Scholarship, and he came into my office at 8 o'clock a.m. On the, on the 11th of May, and we had motion day that started at 10 o'clock. Motion day in our county is a time when you can sit down and you'll, you know that the judge is going to be there so you can file minor motions and have a hearing. He sat down in my office and we had all of about 15 minutes to say hello, get the paperwork ready, and show him where his desk was before the phone was going absolutely nuts. And by the time I went to court at 10 o'clock, we had covered seven different areas of law. And that's small town practice in northwest Kansas. If you want to practice litigation on personal injury, Goodland, Kansas is not the place to be. If you are ADHD like I am, it's a wonderful place because you're changing subjects every 15 seconds. So if you want to be a corporate lawyer, if you want to be a specific subject lawyer, I don't think that small town practice is what you're looking for. That's my opinion. If you work 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, you'll put in 2,080 hours. I have never billed 2,000 hours in 26 years of practicing law. I got close one year, about 1,975 hours, but I have never made 2,000 hours billing in 26 years. I average about 1,800 hours of billable time a year. I've got three kids. I've been to every basketball game. I've been to every football game, every cross country meet, every wrestling match, every track meet. That's our style of practice. I have three secretaries, all who have kids, and if their kid has an event, we figure out a way for them to get there. Because that's our style. Family is first, the practice is second. I think if I leave it out there, just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about money. We have never made it to a half a million gross. 
We've come real close. I'd say we average gross about 460000 a year in gross fees between the two of us. What's that put into my pocket? Well, that differs, differs various years. It depends on how many staff people we have. But uh, it's comfortable. Very comfortable. I've got a 2,000 square foot house that I make an $800, $850 a month house payment on. Cost me $125,000 to build. It's worth $180 or $190 in Goodland, Kansas. You move it to Kansas City, it's a $300,000 house. And I'm paying $850 a month for it, five bedrooms. The, the lifestyle is much slower and much less expensive. You're not going to walk into Goodland, Kansas, or any other rural community in Kansas that I know of and start at $80,000 a year, okay? Which I know at one point, before everything started crashing and burning, associates could manage to pull up eighty grand a year going to the city. You aren't going to get that. is isn't going to happen. So if that's what you need, that's not going to happen in rural Kansas. But you can sure make, our last associate, when she left, was making 50 a year as an associate. She wasn't a partner. Okay? So those are some numbers. But you also have to look at the lifestyle that we have and the level of expenses that we have. Yeah, I paid three forty one a gallon for gas instead of two thirty or whatever you guys are paying. But everything else overall is less expensive. For our lifestyle, uh, we all we have two attorneys, we have three staff people, and we have an abstract office, all in our building, 2,700 square feet. We've got the latest equipment, laptops. If you want to know exactly what we have, Adam can tell you because he worked on it. But you know, we've got the same stuff, and in the courtroom, uh, it isn't quite as fancy as this, but we have the electronics to run projections and the cameras and the whole ball of wax, digital recording of all the all the hearings that uh, take place if we don't have a court reporter. From my office, it's a half a block to the courthouse, a half a block to the bank, half a block to the post office. Within three blocks, you, the distance to walk to Allen Fieldhouse and back, we have all the banks, most of downtown, the courthouse, the library, all of that's right there. We walk everywhere. I go home for lunch. Try that in Kansas City. Isn't gonna happen. It's three minutes to my house. And if I ride my bike, it's ten. And I've done that too. Um, I go home for lunch every day except when I don't have a meeting. Every month we have our bar association luncheon, where the Sherman County Bar gets together and has lunch with the judge and the court reporter. And any out-of-town council that want to come eat, we'll feed them. It's part of our way to try and maintain some professionalism with our colleagues and contact with our colleagues. And that's another thing about our way of practicing law. This morning on my way down, I know I've got a hearing next Wednesday, and I can't be there. So I called the attorney's office on the other side to say, hey, you got a problem with a continuance? We talk to each other. Because we have to see each other every day. The same people. When there's that few of us, yeah, you can get into arguments, but you don't get into personal arguments because you can't. It's got to be professional. And we maintain our professionalism that way. And we, you know, we go into court on motion day morning and try and kick each other's backsides, and then we go eat lunch together. That's just the way it is. I'm on, in the Kiwanis Club. I'm on the hospital foundation that raises money for our hospital. Now, all of those things are available in a, in a small town. And then if you have kids, uh, one of the things that my daughter was surprised about when she went to Southwestern College uh, was sitting around talking with people that had been in the city now, they were talking about musicals. Well, she was in musicals, so she talked about musicals. And then they, another group was talking about 
cross country, and she talked to him about cross country because she was a manager for the cross country team. And then they talked about basketball. Well, she helped out with basketball. And about three quarters of the way through the conversation, they said, wait a minute, how do you know all this stuff? And she said, I did it all because I could. Most of the cities, you've got to pick one thing or two things, and that's all you can do. That's all your kids can be involved in. When it's two minutes to the ball field, it's a whole lot different than when you have to drive a half an hour across town to get to an event or to a practice. We have, well, two and a half hours to anywhere in the world is our phrase. Uh, DIA is two and a half hours away. How far is it to KCI? An hour and a half? Hour? Okay. We have people that have season tickets to the Broncos. Who I'm a Chiefs fan. Um, we have people who have season tickets or season ticket packages to the Rockies, to the Nuggets. We do have a pro basketball team within two and a half hours. All of that's available. We have the theater in Denver. How many of you have tickets to go see Glenn Miller at the Lead Center half a mile away from here next Saturday? How many of you have tickets to Wicked in Kansas City the first week of November? An hour away. I'm not sure they're into Glenn Miller, maybe. Yeah, probably not. But, you know, if you... Exactly. I know you know who they are. <laughs> But do you take advantage of the opportunities that you have in a community like this? I didn't. <coughs> do, you t do people who live in the city always take advantage of those things that are available to them? No. So what's the difference? If you can get to them as easily as we can, why not be at a slower pace? A little more relaxed lifestyle? where you can make a comfortable living. We have an 18-hole golf course, the only one between Garden City and McCook and Hayes and Denver. If you like golf. We've got good schools. We have a hospital that's fully functional. And if they can't take care of it, Eagle Med's based in Goodland. They can have you in Denver in 45 minutes by airplane. I look at it as I'm, I like the aspect of being a little bigger fish in a little smaller pond. Along with that also comes some civic responsibility because you are not anonymous in a small community in Kansas. Everybody knows who you are. It's also nice that everybody knows who your kids are. The other day, mine's driving down the interstate to come down here to a football game. And one of my friends calls me on my cell phone and said, Is Gary Cannon to Lawrence? I said, Yeah, why? He said, He just passed me doing about 90. <laughs> I mean, you can't escape it. You are not anonymous. If you want to be anonymous, you've got to be in the big city. You will not be anonymous, and you'll be asked to be on boards, committees, commissions. You can be as involved as you want to be. But you can't be anonymous. And in my opinion, a small town practice does carry some civic responsibility and an obligation to be involved in some of those activities if you want the community to thrive. And if it doesn't thrive, you won't be there. Anyway, that's my pitch. That's what I think about Western Kansas specifically and about small town practice. I'll let Brett talk and then I think we'll both stand for questions. Very well. What's the uh, show? Show me the what's the demographic here? Who are first years? Mostly first year. Oh, second. Any people getting ready to get out? Third years? Kind of. Good. Okay, so you you guys are just that's why you look so calm and cool. You just started this stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you're are scared? I, I think the uh, you're probably ways from uh, deciding where you want to be. But how many? How many folks came from a small town environment? If you have the inner city, obviously you yeah. know. Where at? Kansas? Yeah, Great Bend. I'm from Lincoln. 
small town in Oklahoma. Great. Uh, McPherson is a town of 14,000 north of Wichita. Uh, we're probably a little different than Jeff set up. Our firm, Bremeyer & Wise, has six lawyers, which is a fairly decent-sized firm for a town of that size. So, and, we, and because of that, we're more specialized, where uh, he, said, he said, you're not going to be a corporate lawyer in a small town. Well, that's what I am. So, because we, we, we have, I have a partner that does, is a CPA, a tax lawyer. She does complex estate planning and tax work. I have uh, one partner, all, he loves criminal work, and he does it, so I shovel it off. I don't do it anymore. The, uh, I have one partner that does a lot of estate planning, and I don't get involved in that. So we're, we're probably a little bit strange in terms of, uh, uh, the, of what we do. We're more specialized than you would normally see it, it, because of our size. Now, I'm, more, I'm probably the, the, the generalist of our firm. I'll do the litigation, corporate work, the odd divorce if I have to. If, if the bank president's daughter is getting a divorce, then I get to do it, those kind of things. But So we're, it's, it's a little bit different, and I, it, it's not less sophisticated. What you, the, before I moved to bed first, and my fear was I'm going to go out there and, you know, what am I going to be able to do? Well, we're lucky to have a lot of industry in town, a lot of corporate work and uh, it's prosperous economically. It's, I, the work I do there is as sophisticated as what I would be doing in Kansas City or, or beyond. So, and maybe that's because of, of our clients. But it's, uh, I don't lack for work. Uh, uh, and you know, when I get out of here, I'll have 43 messages on my BlackBerry and 41 will be mad that I'm not answering their call. So it, it's, we're just buried. I don't know what the last, it's, we've always been busy, but the last six months has been crazy. So we're looking for help. and. Uh, trying to get, get people to come out here. It's, it's amazing to me. We put an ad in the Kansas Bar Journal last year for an associate and didn't get a single response. Not, uh, you know, you think you get a pile of resumes from people getting laid off or something. Nothing. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I think, well, what's, what's wrong with this? I guess the perception that we're, we're living in, you know, some outpost somewhere. Well, and, and like Jeff says, we're, we're, we're 45 minutes from being able to go to a place that you can go to get to anywhere. No. In Wichita, you can't fly anywhere from Wichita. You have to fly to Denver, then you can go. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's, uh, and I like Jeff, I probably have more fun in Kansas City than my friends that live there, because we go up and have a good time when we decide to go and, and see more things. I come up here a lot, I've got a couple of kids that go to KU now, so I have to come up to the football games and the uh, basketball games. It gives me a chance to, to get away, but uh, I think the, uh, I'll tell you a little bit of my trail starting off. I went to KU undergrad, University of Tulsa to law school, then worked uh, for a federal judge for two years as a, as a law clerk, and then kind of made an odd career move. I, you know, I had a, a, some great opportunities in Tulsa, Kansas City, and beyond. If you're a law clerk, people think that you're, you'd be a good lawyer, apparently, because they, 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 that's sought after. So I had all these great job offers and the big money and everything, and I decided to go to McPherson, Kansas, to practice law. And, and even people are like, what are you doing? And the judge I worked for kind of looked at me like, are you serious? You know, But it turned out, and I, I had conjured up in my head that I grew up in Ellsworth, Kansas, which is near there. My wife's from Abilene. We had this wild idea that it would be a good place to raise kids and different environment than we're used to. And I, I convinced myself that I would have a sophisticated practice. And, and because of the technology of the day, imagine that 20 years ago, I thought I could practice law anywhere. Well, it turns out, I was naive and unrealistic, and that all became true. <laughs> but just by blind luck, I, I got sucked into my senior partner, Bob Wise, is quite a salesman, and he sold me why I should come out there. And it's been a, the same kind of existence he lived. You know, we, uh, I don't work less than people in the city, maybe, maybe more, but my commute is 21 seconds if the light is green and 45 if it's red. <laughs> you know, I live, live three blocks from the office. So, I, I don't spend any, I don't work any less, but I just don't spend an hour and a half in my car driving places. And so I'm probably at the office working. But the same thing with the kids. I mean, it's, it's important. As a lawyer, you're flexible, set your own schedule. And I, I, like him, I, I got to get home at 4 o'clock because so we got soccer in Hutchison, my 15 uh, year old's playing. So I don't miss those things and I make it work. And that's been critical. It's been a, it's been a, I have four kids and that keeps you pretty busy as well. But in terms of the, uh, I think, I'm convinced, uh, I guess in my uh, experience, that you, you can practice in sophisticated areas of law. You can, it's probably more hands-on. I worked for a law firm in Tulsa as a law clerk before I worked for the federal judge. And I was back in a cubicle with the other associates 
working on McDonnell Douglas employment cases. And they offered me a job, and I, I could see that for the next five years of my, first five years of my career, I was going to be in that same cubicle, not ever talking to a client. Well, the first, the, the training program at Bremeyer and Wise is, here's your 25 new files, good luck. And, so, and I think it's more hands-on. I, I see people, I talk to clients, I interact with them, I mean, it, both in the community and in my office, where I think in the bigger firms, there's somebody else doing that for a while before it gets down to you. So uh, we don't lack for, uh, like I said, that, that's kind of the training program. You go over there to court, you're scared to death because you don't know what you're doing. I mean, you guys think you're scared now? Wait till, you're, wait till you have to go to your first hearing and you don't know what's going on. So, but but you, you live and learn and you have the, the local guys that will help you out. It's not, we do we do battle with one another, but like he says, we, you got to see them every day. You're in church with them, their kids are in school with you, your friends. And uh, and so I, I think that we're, uh, we uh, have a lot of work and uh, have a lot of fun, a lot of collegiality. It's just amazing to me that somebody, unless, uh, that you automatically, everybody wants to go to Kansas City or Chicago or something, I think. I, I guess I did it too. I, I convinced myself, I went to, I was going to stay in Tulsa or maybe Kansas City, and then the more I saw that process and the commute and everything, I thought, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to drive 45 minutes every day to go to work. It just, just wasn't my thing. So, uh, and maybe, but I think there's a lot to, it has to offer. Uh, Money-wise, uh, like him, I make a pretty good living. It kind of comes and goes. We, we're consistently dragging about the same amount of, of money a year. Uh, once in a while, you hit a hit a nice lick on a personal injury case or something. It's a little bit of a bonus, but you know, I, I, cost of living is, is cheaper. And I, I basically, uh, people would think that I live a fairly affluent lifestyle, probably. But you know, you're not going to make half a million dollars working as a small town lawyer, but you can make a good living and provide for your kids and send checks to KU every <laughs> month. <laughs> for, just got one out, two are in now, and one's coming. So. But uh, I guess the uh, I would I would encourage all of you to uh, you know look at this as a as a career option. Go go check it out. Go uh, there's a lot of firms like see they're starving out there for for help. And you talk about opportunities. I'm guaranteed if you you could go to a small town in Kansas and, and walk in somebody like his office. He he'd love to give you the work. I mean that's how we are. Like come on, there's no we're not going to hoard it. There's probably a bunch of guys that are getting ready to retire. The next four or five years, you could go learn something from a, a guy that knows a lot or a gal and take over their practice. I mean, they're, they'd be happy to turn it over. And there's an opportunity. And in Western Kansas, I think the population is obviously declining where they can't find a county attorney for two or three counties. I mean, there's all kinds of this stuff going on. And, and pharmacists are lack pharmacists and lack lawyers. Imagine that, lacking lawyers. I thought we had too many. <laughs> but, you know, so I encourage you to, as you, as you go through your practice in this uh, the Remire Scholarship, was uh, my senior partner, John Bremeyer, who died last year, uh, was a lover of KU Law School. And I think he's probably over there in the 46 or 47 picture. He'd, he'd, be, he'd be there. He came back from uh, the Navy after World War II, finished law school here, and then moved back to McPherson, which was his hometown. And he was the single biggest champion of McPherson, Kansas, that has ever lived. And he loved the small town practice of law. And so one of his legacies was to give this money KU Law School to encourage folks like you to, to consider uh, small town practice. And the theory being, we have trouble in our firm where I, re I remember these days when you're in law school, you're broke, and, and money's a big thing in this whole recruiting process. Well, you know, I had a chance to go to Wichita and work at a big firm, and they're going to pay me in those days $3,000 a month. Well, that's like, you know, Christmas. Well, I wouldn't, it, had I gone to McPherson, you know, we don't do that. You, you get paid $1,000 just to be there, right? And so we, we can never compete with that. So John cured that. He said, if you'll, if you'll go to a small city in Kansas and practice law for the summer or uh, do an internship, he'll pay you like you were going to Kansas City. We, we took away that barrier. And it's, uh, it's a heck of a program, I think. His idea was to, if we can just get folks out there, one, we'll get a look at you, see if you're worth a darn as a potential lawyer, but also you'll get a feel for it, and you'll stay there. I mean, I, I think... The people that, if you came and spent a summer with us, you would you would want to come back in the workforce and live there. And that's, that's part of the recruiting process. So hopefully, uh, you know, it's been used around these uh, small uh, small communities, and it's an opportunity. It's like, uh, you know, I, I don't know what else we can offer you. It's, <laughs> you'll find a place to work, and, and especially the you, one L's and two L's, you're not going to get a decent 
job offer at a big firm you know, as a one L. I mean, they, they don't. Most of them don't hire, do they? I mean, for clerkships. No, it's it's declining right, right now. And some did two three years ago, but the, the number that are offering one L clerkships is really strong. Well, yeah. this is, this kind of goes yeah. flies in the face of my normal advice to law students. After your first year, I'd go play for the summer. Don't work because. <laughs> That's your last time. You're going to be working the rest of your life. But having said that, if you decide to work, then uh, uh, you know, give us a try. I mean, I think it's a perfect opportunity. You get paid well, learn something, and it'll, it'll help you in your law school. Uh, I, re I remember sitting where you were sitting some years ago, and I didn't know a pleading from a whatever. It was all gibberish. You, you're sitting there, and some people are in your class is more experienced than you. They've been out in life or whatever, or had some uh, work in a law firm. And just, just the summer of going to the courthouse, uh, writing some memos, doing some research would, will, would do great things for you in terms of uh, your, your law school class, I think, too. So, anyway, that's kind of what I have. It's very, I can echo almost all his comments in terms of quality of life and, and uh, all that, but I'll open up for questions. Um, my perception of small towns have been they're not really that diverse. So, how welcoming are these small, would these small towns be? Well, I hate to be honest, but I'm going to have to be. Um, we have several, we have two women attorneys in Goodland. We have one lady attorney in Sharon Springs and another one in St. Francis and one in Colby and one in Hoxie. So there are several women attorneys in our area. But our population base is probably 92% white in Goodland. And the balance is primarily Hispanic. Uh, and we have a couple of uh, black families in town that are very, very well accepted. My perception of Goodland, Kansas, is we, sh we should be very open and welcoming. But I also see the reaction sometimes, and it's not as welcoming as I would like it to be uh, toward people of color uh, or of any minority. Our minority, because in Southwest Kansas, it's, there are several communities that are now more predominantly minority than they are white, and so that might be an opportunity that direction that might be more welcoming. I don't know for sure. Um, the professional people, there wouldn't be a problem. They're very welcoming which is a, a large portion of the community. But the exact perception of the, quote, general populace, I, I really would like them to be more welcoming than they are. And that's because of our remoteness. Is that true for in Yeah, it's, we, it's changed a great deal in the last 10 years. We were not diverse at all when I moved there, but now just be, you know, a lot. Uh, it's changing rapidly. But I, 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 would, I guess I, I'm not naive enough to think there's not prejudice there, but I think it's that's kind of going by the going by the boards. Can I jump in real quick? Um, and I'm Karen Hester, I also work with Todd. Yep. My sister used to work at person back before she went to medical school for the, the life company that's out there. And so she's a single black female out in the area and um, she enjoyed the town. She didn't have any overt racism, but what she would do is just go to Wichita. And so you just find the areas to work with. You have more trouble finding somebody your age to, <laughs> 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 to, to have That's fun with than you would to worry about. Yeah. To uh, in growing up in a small town and in, in, in kind of rolling back um, the years, a day or two, and looking back at that experience, um, small towns can be clandestine, so to speak. And to take that idea of minority but kind of make it broader, just someone from the outside, so to speak. And I know both of you gentlemen did not grow up necessarily in the specific towns that you're working in. Is there a barrier there that you have to get over from a professional standpoint of here's you know the new kid on the block, but they're also not from Goodland, they're not from McPherson, and so on? Uh, I don't think so. I, I, like if, when somebody joins us, they they get kind of branded with their with Remar Y. So whether that's good or bad, right. I, I hope it's good. <laughs> you you immediately be accepted or when they <laughs> not what, or yeah. not accepted. <laughs> 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 I've got a trail of them, but just like the. Uh, you know, when we are clients, if you call and say, you know, 
I introduce you to somebody, they would immediately think that you were worthy because we hired you. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I think, I think you're coming in at a different level there. You're, as a professional, young professional, you're not going to, they'll be happy to have you. I would echo that to a certain extent, although I do joke with some of my clients that, hey, I've only been here for 26 years. I'm not quite a native yet. Right. Uh, and so I do, I don't think that that's there, uh, but you do joke about it. I do have the advantage of working with a, my partner who grew up, was born in Goodland and grew up in Goodland. Uh, so, you know, that, that's an advantage, but we've had several people that have come in from the outside, so to right. speak, and uh, they've been well accepted. Good question. Um, out in western Kansas, I know s uh, some of the counties will have full-time county attorney, and then some of them will share county attorneys, or some private practice lawyer will do that as a part-time job. Is it wh which way is it in Goodland, and how many of them have like a full-time? Goodland, we have a full-time county attorney, uh, and I don't I don't know what our compensation package is, quite honestly, but it is full-time. Uh, my personal opinion is that if, it, if the office was managed a little different, she could have a private practice if she wanted to. I don't think she wants to. I think she's happy just being the county attorney, and that's all she wants to do. Uh, in Thomas County, it's a there's the firm Flipsy and Flipsy. Bruce Flipsy is the county attorney. His wife helps him out with all the juvenile and child needed care cases, and he does all the criminal stuff. And they have a private practice as well. Uh, Every other county, it's strictly part time, and they are full, you know, basically full time private attorneys, and then have the uh, county attorney practice as well. Yes, ma'am. How does the scholarship function? I guess just to preface this, I am from North Central Kansas, but really, really farmy. Like, I mean, like I'm very small. So, like, if our local attorney doesn't need help then you'd have to go to the bigger town, which is a considerable bigger jump. So, but that would be kind of outside of my home area. How do you, you know, if I want to go to different towns or something like that, how does the recruitment process work? I mean, are there ads besides the ABA or? We send, we send a letter to the, all the law firms in Kansas once a year saying this is available. So it's kind of your job to go find a lawyer that would, could use you over the summer. That's it. We kind of let uh, the, Law students, you know, knock on the door or call and say, "Could you use somebody?" It's kind of a no-brainer for the law firms too. If somebody's paying for their summer help, it's not clear to me why they wouldn't take advantage of it. But what's what we didn't plan for, I don't think we. This we're kind of going as we make it up as we go along. Is it didn't occur to me that you know in a small town you wouldn't hire an associate very often, maybe once every ten years. Where the, the big city firms are hiring people. They hire six new associates a year, hoping that two of them stick, or, or that type of thing. They have an ongoing program. Well, in our world, we haven't hired anybody for 12 years, or five years overdue. But it, so, it, so once we uh, had a summer court there, we liked and we hired them, and then we'd be out of the market maybe for another 10 years. So that's that's what we we didn't kind of we didn't count it. We can pretty quickly saturate all the folks that need to hire a new lawyer. But I, I still think the law firms will take advantage of it to uh, just have a summer clerk and some help. What we did in Goodland, uh, with the county attorney, the judge, our office, and then the trust officer attorney at the First National Bank, we all got together and said, hey, this is available. Is there some way we can work together and bring somebody in and do it that way? And so that's what we did was we, the four offices, then split it over the summer and actually paid the person during the summer who came in in addition to whatever they received from Braemar. Uh, and so that, that's how we did it, is we, again, cooperated with each other. It seems to be some foreign concept to some people, but we, we work together to make it happen. Sure. Um, would that also work if you went to work for a county attorney for the summer? Would that scholarship apply? Yeah, we, we've kind of opened up to about anything. Just to, just want to get you out in the, the smaller community so you can get your feet wet, see if you like what you see. So I'm sure they could use your help. You just can't do the externship clinic. You can't get credit. So I'm going to work situation. And, and we'll contact um, a great deal of the small firms in Kansas in the next few months, remind them of the existence of the program, 
and then a handful will get back in touch with us every year and say, hey, we really would like somebody. So we'll advertise those firms to you guys. And for those that don't get it back, back in touch with us, we list them in the Breedmeyer Fund directory here. Uh, there's about 150 firms uh, with contact information in the directory and also the KU law grads who work for the firm. So um, if you're in a situation like Tanya and you're not sure where you want to work, you, you can't necessarily go back home, but you're looking at some firms in a lot of different cities, this is a great first place to go. <coughs> and you can simply write to these firms later on. In, if you're a 1L later on in the semester, if you're a 2L or 3L right now, um, to say, hey, I'm, I'm interested in coming out. Um, you know, there's this program that exists that would basically be a financial incentive uh, for me to work for you, and you know, can we talk about it? It's, it's as simple as that, trying to get something set up like that. Question? Uh, kind of a practice-related question, I guess. Um, I know that it seems a lot of your work is localized to your town, but do you have opportunities where you have to argue uh, a case in another town in Kansas? Are you, are you traveling between towns sometimes to argue for clients? Uh, in other towns? In Goodland we are all the time. Um, in addition, I've uh, been down in front of the Kansas Court of Appeals and the Kansas Supreme Court. Uh, I avoid federal practice like the plague. Uh, I've done it, I've done two cases in federal court and didn't like the experience at all. And so we do no federal practice. Part of the problem is it's five hours to the courthouse. And so we don't do any federal practice. I imagine in the person they, they probably do federal practice a lot more. That opportunity was there. I didn't like it. There are still opportunities to do federal practice from Goodland, bankruptcy practice, all of that. We just choose not to. Yeah, it's a fine expression. We, we do some work in federal court a lot, and obviously bankruptcy courts in Wichita. And we do a lot of, we represent a lot of banks, so we're doing creditor work in bankruptcy. <laughs> So, and, and just that our, our firm kind of handle, kind of covers a county west, McPherson County, and the county east. So we kind of have a 75 mile swat we, that we get a lot of clients from. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're around. Don't, don't leave a lot. I, I, I went there, I moved there in 1988 and started my small town practice. Got hooked up with a client that was based in Scottsdale, Arizona, of all places. My partner knew this guy, knew this guy started this business, and uh, they pioneered uh, photo radar. That you've seen the speed cameras and the take your picture at the red light if you run a red light. They started that uh, business in Arizona in 1986, and I became their counsel, kind of an odd place for your lawyer to be in the person in Kansas. But with those guys, I traveled the world for five years, literally, uh, commuted to British Columbia, uh, Australia, New Zealand. We did programs there, England. So. In, in my, it was a, an odd practice uh, to start there and then do that. And thankfully, they got bought out by a bigger company, and I got to come home. Because <laughs> I mean, that all sounds, it sounds glamorous until you're doing it, and you've got four little kids at home, and your wife's going to shoot you, and you come <laughs> walk back in the door and that kind of thing. But it, was, it, was, it sounds glamorous, but it was a good experience. I, you know, I learned a great deal. It's kind of a, uh, and now I probably don't venture more than up here in Wichita. We've had depositions in Vegas, in Tucson, in Minnesota, in Chicago. Uh, appeared before the American Arbitration Association in New York. Uh, haven't had the chance to travel the world, but travel the country for the I hate to tell you this, but that's where I'm going tomorrow. Where's that? The Chiefs team in Philadelphia. Oh. <laughs> I had a client call me last week and said, What are you doing you know, Saturday, 26th? And I said, I'm going to go up to Family Day for a KU game. And he goes, you want to, wouldn't you rather go see the Chiefs? And I, and I said, well, not, not really. What if we uh, rode up on the, with the Chiefs on their chartered airplane? What if I got your room in Philadelphia? What if we sat in the owner's suite at the Eagle Stadium and then invite home with the team? I go, what time are we leaving? <laughs> so I had to break the news to my daughter and son that I'm going to come out. They, they understood so, so sometimes you even get a good client out of it. You, you have, yeah, I just want to talk about yeah. the, the logistics of the program just really quickly. Um, we will have application forms available later this semester. 
And those are typically due early April. So you've got plenty of time to get this all set up. And um, I can tell you right now that everyone who has applied, um, who's lined up a job in an eligible county, has been funded in some form or fashion um, since the program started in 2005. I think the least amount of money that's been um, granted is $750, and the most is over $5,000. And so the idea really is to kind of level the playing field as, as far as um, you know, compensation goes uh, if, if you're looking at a practice in a smaller town versus a practice in you know, Kansas City or Wichita or some other larger city. So um, please keep this in mind. We'll send out plenty of email notice as time goes by. And uh, the application process itself is really simple. Just a two-page application, one page by the student, one page by the employer, and then a committee of me, Brett, and two faculty members gets together and divvies up the money. And you'll know um, what your award will be before you start working. If there are any other questions, we're happy to take them. If not, I'd like to thank both Jeff and Brett for making the trip in.